गुड मॉर्निंग माई यूट्यूब फैमिली दिस इज आकांक्षा शर्मा फ्रॉम पी आर एस एजुकेशनल ट्रस्ट आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग वेल एंड थैंक यू फॉर योर सपोर्ट वॉट एवर यू आर गिविंग ऑन आवर चैनल आफ्टर कम्पलीशन ऑफ आवर टू वेबिनार्स टूडे वी आर प्रोसीडिंग फॉर थर्ड वन एंड द टॉपिक इज एनिमल हैंडलिंग आवर स्टीम स्पीकर फॉर दिस इवेंट इज मिस्टर पैम वोरा गोल्ड मेडलिस्ट ऑफ मुंबई यूनिवर्सिटी इन फार्मेसी कैटेगरी नाइपर ऑल इंडिया रैंक इलेवन जी पैट ऑल इंडिया रैंक फोर्टी थ्री आई आई टी बी एच यू ऑल इंडिया रैंक सेवन मनीपाल ऑल इंडिया रैंक एट सी यू टी पी जी स्कोर रैंक वन आई सी टी एम टेक स्कोर रैंक वन गेट ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री क्वालिफाइड वी highly obliged to have you on our platform thank you so much and sir please i would like to request to start your presentation everybody jaise ki aaj ka topic hai we are going to discuss upon animal handling right so jab hum pharmacological research ki baat karte hain animal handling plays a very important role because hum animals ko jab uh, pre clinical studies ke liye we need animal experimentation right so that is why animal handling is very very essential now if i talk about committee for the control and supervision of experimentation on animals ccsea so this is a committee that sets certain rules acts and guidelines that we have to follow while we are handling and performing experiments with animals right so isko pehle cpcsea bolte ab ye ccsea hai so they appoint the iaec committee institutional animal ethics committee so according to that committee up uh, if you get approval for the animal studies you have to uh, follow certain protocols certain guidelines certain regulations while you are performing and dealing with animals so the three r's of animal research are reduce refine replace reducing the number of animals that are used jitne hum animals use kar rahe agar utni zarurat nahi hai so it's better that we reduce the number refining the process agar ho sake to non invasive methods adopt kare we should try that least harm is caused to the animals and replace if possible we can replace the in vivo studies with in vitro ex vivo or in silico using certain computer softwares and algorithms that are based on ai kaun se kaun se animals we are most widely used more of the most commonly used animals so we use rodents we use non rodents and then we use certain other miscellaneous animals like zebra fish which is now currently being very popular chicken and pigeon and frog on which we can perform other studies non rodents mein there are rabbit dogs monkeys and pigs and in rodents we have mice rat gerbil guinea pigs hamster so chinese hamster ovary is widely used in guinea pig we use ilium mostly right so rat may we use uterus for spasmolytic activity and all rabbit is used for skin irritation test pyrogen test dress test so many other things so as a particular animals ke liye we need particular uh, particular uh, protocols and guidelines to be followed so these are the most commonly used experimentation animals albino so there are different uh, strains and there are different breeds so there are nude mice beige mice albino mice rats may be star rat c57 and there are different types of um, rats and different types of mice that are available in different strains and breeds so now if i talk about pharmacological experiments so there are of two types preclinical and clinical in preclinical testing we have in vivo in vitro in silico and in situ while in clinical testing we majorly perform on humans or pharmacological data is being generated so we will be focusing in this presentation about the pre clinical testing which is useful for drug discovery so what are the different parameters for animal handling animal handling hum basically karte hain so that hum uh, jab hum karte hain to hum uske different parameters hai jo aapko yaad rakhne chahiye that should be very well known to you type of dosing whether you are whenever you are handling an animal your dosing is iv oral sc intramuscular or whatever type of animal कौन सा एनिमल हम यूज कर रहे हैं सो इज इट स्मॉल एनिमल लार्ज एनिमल रैट माइस वॉट इज द एज ऑफ द एनिमल वॉट इज द जेंडर ऑफ द एनिमल मेल और फीमेल इफ इट्स फीमेल इफ इट्स ऑन ईस्ट्रेस साइकिल देन देर विल बी डिफरेंट फिजोलॉजिकल पैरामीटर्स दैट विल बी रिकॉर्डेड देन द नेचर ऑफ द स्टडी सो आपकी स्टडी का नेचर इज इट अ प्रोलॉन्ग स्टडी और अ शॉर्ट टर्म स्टडी 
so there are various oecd guidelines organization for economic cooperation development so there are 401234 up to uh, 9 there are different guidelines and there is 420 which is for fixed dose uh, procedures and all so there are different guidelines for different toxicities testing so you need to know the nature of the study whether it is a pharmacological data or generation study or a toxicological data toxicokinetics dmpk studies etc grouping of animals so whenever you have issued animals right so there you have to compare so for the comparison you need a number of groups so that your statistical validation can be then further carried out so per se in which only the drug is given sham operated in which there is surgery operated model control group whereby the only the saline is given and test so test can be test group one test group two whereby we give different doses of that particular test substance so that is what you call test group now when we talk about handling acclimatization and all so these are different factors that affect the animal behavior and whenever we are going to see behavioral assays or behavioral studies so these are different kinds of um, parameters that we need to remember like handling acclimatization feeding petting bedding environment record maintenance climate conditions etc so acclimatization is basically quarantine so jab, uh, always put yourself in the place of an animal and then uh, understand how it might work so jab aapko koi nahi jagah pe dalenge to what will you do you will start exploring Where see the animal starts rearing when it's put from laboratory from the animal house into your laboratory so it has an alag it has a different environment usko ek alag environment mila hai to, to see around things so wo uske behavior pe usse alag alag effects aa sakte hain so uski feeding what kind of feed is it's to be given petting always see that aap usko ek bar pet karo taki wo stress condition mein na aaye because once it's in stress condition the physiological parameters and the behavioral studies might be altered so you need to always pet it should feel safe ke wo aapke haathon mein safe hai usko ye bhi bhanak nahi padni chahiye that you are going to perform experimentation on that animal right bedding so there are so many litters so you need to keep on changing the beds for the animals because they also need sanitary condition hygienic conditions right environment so lux per hour so there is some lux per hour ka provisions for the animals just like we have 12 hour day 12 hour night cycle so 24 hour cycle chronopharmacological clock animals also have diurnal species right so humidity noise record maintenance once you get data you need to record that data and then archive that data so that is also very essential what are the different routes of drug administration so orally we have oral gavage needle so this gavage needle is basically uh, you i will be showing all the video ahead of of course so gavaging needle mein you basically instill the or you feed tube the particular animal with the help of a needle inhalation the nasal technique for pulmonary drugs iv im ip id sc subcutaneous intravenous intramuscular intraperitoneal intradermal so that uh, different routes different angles and different requirements then we have topical topical is very essential because for skin irritancy test or certain drugs that are locally acting and all so for that uh, topical studies are performed and majorly rabbit is used and sometimes for permeability studies we use goat skin and for certain different studies as well now for organ system experimentations so there are different organ systems and which you can work on different diseases like nervous system you can work on neurodegenerative disease alzheimer parkinson huntington als M, uh, multiple sclerosis digestive system you can work upon peptic ulcers you can work upon constipation diarrhea reproductive system you can work upon infertility embryonic toxicity uh, or testis ovaries there are so many different organs that are associated in digestive system small intestine large intestine stomach in nervous system you have brain spinal cord in respiratory again you have a different um, uh, pulmonary drugs that are used for copd asthma cvs you have angina pectoris arrhythmia myocardial infarction hypertension special senses so you have eyes skin nose if you all have any doubts just uh, keep on typing your doubts in the comment section i'll be answering them at the end of the session okay blood samples so once the, you have an animal you need to collect the blood samples right so the collection of that blood sample is very very essential so for that we have different techniques that require anesthesia and some techniques that do not require anesthesia so cephanous vein is the most widely used uh, technique for blood collection and when we talk about blood collection requiring anesthesia 
So we have tail snip, which is most commonly used, and I'll be showing you all video ahead in the in this particular presentation only. Then we have marginal ear vein. This is widely used technique in rabbits, and then we have jugular vein. These are three commonly used techniques. Terminal procedures whereby we sacrifice the animal. So we have cardiac puncture, retroorbital, and posterior vanakava. So these are different techniques whereby we have terminal procedure of the animal sacrifice and blood collection. Retroorbital or orbital sinus is most widely used because सबसे ज्यादा जो ब्लड का अमाउंट होता है यू गेट इट फ्रॉम दिस पर्टिकुलर टेक्निक ओनली सो दैट इज व्हाई ऑर्बिटल साइनस इज वेरी वेरी कॉमनली यूज्ड नाउ दिस इज अ वीडियो दैट आई विल बी प्लेइंग एट द एंड सो फॉर योर कन्वीनियंस बिकॉज़ इट इट रिप्रेजेंट्स हाउ हाउ इज द एक्शन ऑफ अ पर्टिकुलर रिस्ट्रेनिंग एंड हाउ डू यू कलेक्ट द ब्लड फ्रॉम अ पर्टिकुलर रैट और अ माइस सो हियर यू कैन सी दिस इज अ रैट इनसाइड अ रिस्ट्रेनर यू slowly wash it with uh, the tail with ethanol then you massage it massage kyu karte hain because massaging helps you so that uh, all the there is congestion of the veins and they appear superficially then from 2 to 3 cm from the tip you gently press after pressing there is congestion you insert or incise in the needle or the cannula and then that cannula is in connection with the coagulant Tube, anti, the tube that is for blood collection containing anticoagulants like EDTA. Why is it necessary? Obviously, blood clot will happen. You won't be able to perform your histological or oh, sorry, your any studies that are related to physiological parameters like if you want to check proteins or any other presence of any other nutrients or substance in blood, it would be difficult. So see, can you see how the blood is being collected over here from the tube? So this is a video from Professor Savsan Ab Abdul Fato. I have obtained this from YouTube. Um, whatever. So you can see how this is um, the blood is being collected from the tail vein. list of equipments and devices so there are different equipments like hba1c analyzer which is a glycosylated hemoglobin so you estimate blood glucose hematology for hematological parameters like cbc wbc platelets rbc elisa plate leader for antigen antibody interaction centrifuge so centrifuge is for uh, uh, separating the supernatant and decanting the fluid so that all your rbc wbc platelets are precipitated esr erythrocyte sedimentation rate analyzer this is very useful for infectious diseases and all so this is a very important parameter esr then you have hemoglobin meter then you have incubators for appropriate environment then you have cryostat microtome so microtome is a device or a, a technique in which you, you you cut down the tissues that are embedded in the paraffin so many a times aapne dekha hoga cancers mein human mein biopsy mein they take out uh, tissue of uh, the sample and then they put it in a cryostat microtome because it's uh, it should be in the freezed condition so microtome is basically for sectioning of the tissue and then you have water bath which is very again very essential so if i talk about certain studies that you can perform uh, for animals you, there are behavioral assays so sensory motor sensory motor may we have allodynia which is um, widely used so plethysmometer is basically for checking uh, ox spirometry te like technique so it is for any Uh, diseases associated with respiratory system allodynia may we have physical allodynia chemical allodynia we have electrical allodynia we have vibrational allodynia as well we have acoustic allodynia as well noisy then we have chemical allodynia like we use acetone so acetone is widely used known as a cold allodynia matlab agar aapke haath pe main ice rakh deta hu you will feel cold right why you will you feel cold it is a different sensation if it is a different nociception so similarly allodynia uh, that nociception is appeared by acetone and then you have hot allodynia as well uh, where by we use rendel sileto hardgreaves hot plate method one fre these are all methods for sensory met testing then for affective behavior or you can say for diseases that are alzheimer parkinson uh, depression anxiety epilepsy we have light and dark box test we have elevated plus maze that is plus maze is bhul bhulaiya so the animal ko kitna time lagta hai bahar aane mein then there is morris water passive avoidance test aggression test 
tail suspension test which is widely used for depression tail suspension forced swim test so ye kafi important test hai open field test aap animal ko open field mein chhod dete ho and then you see that how much time it is taking to reach to the flag or something koi na koi object learning and memory again we have barns maze we have team maze novel arm recognition novel object recognition that is y field test bhi bolte hain so these are most commonly used learning or memory test that is useful and morris langendorf is widely used for your cardiovascular parameter testing then there's a anesthesia chamber so either either isoflurin or any other anesthesia is uh, given so we don't have to inject the end to the animal in this keep the animal in the chamber and it will be anesthetized automatically stereotaxy electroconvulsive meter to develop seizures in animals pole clamp uh, and anesthesiometer and then there is organ bath whereby a response is obtained those response curve you can plot then uh, on the uh, using with the help of frontal lever and it is obtained on a sherington cylinder rota rod so in this there is a rod animals are placed and the grip strength of the animal is checked acto photometer so these are all for pain motor coordination activities and all her greaves and all but these are all useful for a similar purpose now if i talk about the different types of studies that you can perform so biochemical histological assays assay mein you can perform bio assays histological studies mein you can perform certain uh, tissue studies on animals then biochemical assays mein you can perform various biochemical estimation protein brad force nanhydrin biurate folin cyclo lori glucose estimation mein you can measure using different glu uh, glu uh, god pod method and all so there are so many different biochemical estimation that you can do for using animals now if i talk about four types of restraints four types of restraints what is restraining first of all aap kabu mein karte ho animal ko you immobilize it you try to keep it under your control so there is manual chemical combination method and non contact method so in manual method there are devices like restrainers in chemicals we have minor tranquilizers and combination we use a mixture of both of them when the time of the surgery or your experiment is prolonged now these are images of few cages that i'll show you so the whenever we are performing experimentation so we have multiple groups of animals how do we locomote them unko handle kaise kare so we have cages trolleys in these trolleys because you cannot give more stress to the animals so uh, that is why these trolleys are useful cage and restrainer now cage this kind of cage is there so this see over here there is a bottle uh, there is a different uh, opening for bottle and a different feeding tube a feeding um, a cavity whereby there is feed given to the animal and this is the closed cage open cage system is also there open field whereby the animals are left open then these are the images of restrainer this is a bag in which you upside down place the animal with just the tail outside and the face of the animal is on the other side this is a restrainer so uh, of course over here it, uh, we don't have to kill the animal we just have to restrain it so there are see over here can you see there are certain perforations holes for the breathing so that the breathing is not stopped it's just restrained now this is a particular uh, video that represents how do you scrub from a particular rat or a mice so this feeding is very very important so this cage is how you place the particular mice or a rat on the cage and once you remove it it should not be uh, like mishandled it should not be for more longer time allowed to just roam you have to keep it on that particular cage for some time and after keeping that uh, it on the particular cage you just have to scruff it the loose skin near the ears you have to catch hold of so there are different methods c method v method you have to catch like this and slowly turn it upside down so and uh, so in this your thumb your index finger and your ring finger plays a role because you keep the tail between your near your ring finger your index finger and thumb is used for scruffing so see how he has scruffed the animal over here so this is again a video that i have obtained from youtube this is a image of a cage so how the cage this is um, a number of animals in the cage should not be overcrowded if it's overcrowded then there will be a lot of problem so over here can you see there is a single um, rice over here there are two three if if there is infectious disease it will immediately spread and contagious disease right so it's better that you take care of the animals appropriately and this is a playful cage so here can you see the different activities there there is a roller here there is a slide like structure ladder rods so this there can be different cage designing as well handling and restraining of animals it's an art to handle and restrain the particular animals so 
these are the oral feeding tubes see can you see over here you need a glove and oral cavity how this is being feeded by into the mouth oral cavity subcutaneous injection nothing just pick up a mice grab the loose skin then at a 45 degree or 30 degree angle slightly disinfect the area and slowly insert the or instill the injection and a gauze needle this is how you inject a subcutaneous injection intraperitoneal in the peritoneum cavity instill the particular injection now there are four quadrants right left upper right lower right lower left upper left so you have to check which quadrant you are targeting and only the tip of the needle must penetrate not the entire needle and because it's abdominal cavity it might lead to certain refluxes so it's better that we just uh, choose a particular quadrant and quickly see and for if you want to see whether you have penetrated or not into other cavity you can just perforate it and check whether if it's blood coming then you means you have damaged the blood vessels or the vasculature system now how do you collect blood so this is the same method that i have shown for tail snip method and all whereby sniffs this is a rat and the sniffing method and this is a method whereby you are orbital retro orbital so a capillary tube is taken and slowly it is injected into the conjunctival cavity of the animal and there is immediate usher stream of blood that comes out this is by cardiac puncture which is invasive method so we have a posterior vena cava cardiac puncture whereby you disinfect the thorax cavity um, and thorax area and then you check the palpitations of the heart just like you check over here on carotid, carotid artery and all so you check the perforations uh, you check the palpitations and then finally you insert a 24 gauge needle there are different gauge needles available 19 21 but 24 is most common to use if you talk about saphenous vein so saphenous vein you can see over here you need to firstly shave the particular part or remove the hair and then it using a small scalpel you can uh, just uh, shave that uh, particular part of and then apply some vaseline and then clean the area and finally descend and finally insert the needle that is required uh, this is about the intramuscular injection in rabbits and subcutaneous injection look at the way how they are injecting how they are treating and uh, rabbits uh, is a bigger animal so it is to be handled with care if i talk about blood collection from carotid artery you can see this is a very deep process but just like in humans we have you know uh, you would have heard about there are stitches so there are catheters there are sutures in rats and mice as well so this is how you firstly anesthetize restrain shave a particular part uh, or cut open in size uh, using a scissor or a forceps just in, in, uh, enlarge the cavity and finally isolate the nerve and then uh, the, like in diabetes if it's nephro uh, if it's neuropathy so we uh, uh, target the sciatic nerve so similarly there are different nerves and different um, particular uh, uh, target nerves that we are targeting for particular experimentation right here you can see uh, a particular image of the carotid arteries and uh, how it is being uh, carried out the process is being carried out zebra fish so i have focused upon this uh, in this experimentation about zebra fish because zebra fish is widely used model nowadays and it is used for toxicological pharmacological data molecular screening genome based assays neurological disease teratogenic effects cancer research etc so this is uh, the image of a zebra fish now why do we use zebra fish because least amount of drug is required cost effective Gene expression studies, you can perform knock-in and knock-out studies both uh, for experimentation like in obesity or in condition like hemophilia and all. So you need certain knock-in and knock-out studies. Blood-brain barrier permeability studies, PKPD, diurnal species as I mentioned, 24-hour 20, uh, cycle, 12 hours light, 12 hours day cycle. So it is better than any other in vitro screening model. Now. Uh, animal handling is also is essential that you rem uh, that you understand the experimental procedure and a protocol while using a particular animal model so whenever you're using a particular animal you need to set up an experimental design what kind of and you need to define your research objectives suppose i'm working on diabetes so i need to define that diabetes experimentation protocol for diabetes ethical consideration must be followed glp oecd ich so ICH, S5, S, uh, S2, if I'm performing any toxicological data on teratogenicity, that is reproductive toxicity, genotoxicity, etc. Housing feeding condition. Now, this is a model for zebrafish. 
but i'm in generally talking it should be you should be well versed with the housing feeding nutrition and a uh, different uh, temperature that uh, um, you know ventilation process for the animal for well being so that it can be under non stress condition then allocating the experimental groups you divide the groups and ensure randomization randomization is essential for avoiding outliers or avoiding any other biasness biasness matlab any other partiality in the suppose if you pehle se you know that ha ye ye group ye hai so what is the use of the experimental data so biasness ko avoid karne ke liye and errors ko minimize karne ke liye we perform randomization method randomization replication blocking these are three techniques rrb then uh, we set the conditions so there are different conditions that are required like for if for performing studies for teratogenicity so is it are you performing at the embryo stage or are you performing at the uh, capita uh, at the lactation stage at the gestation stage um, at the developmental stage there are different exposure conditions and different exposure stages then treatment what if you are giving a treatment what drug are you giving is there any concomitant drug given or uh, what is the different methods for administration and then you monitor the particular results once you obtain the results you can perform behavioral studies molecular analysis social behavior is widely used for depression molecular analysis imaging techniques there are different imaging techniques like pet positron emitron tomography positron emission then there is spect single photon emission computed tomography then there is ct scan mri for animals also we have such imaging techniques so this is what is important then we have data analysis so data analysis say we perform anova test we perform f test right uh, t test whenever you perform a test you have obtained the results how will you confirm how will you validate so validation of result is obtained by statistical analysis so this is important about the data analysis then results and conclusions you can perform different result uh, you can uh, perform different experiments obtain different results and reach out to different conclusions and your discussion part is the main part your abstract in a discussion is the main part that is read by any researcher in a particular paper so you need to set it well and reporting after reporting your documentation must be in archival uh, it should be appropriately followed uh, following all the uh, good documentation practices and should uh, performing uh, you should be having an idea about the sops standard operating procedures while you are dealing with the experiments and uh, this is how you establish any particular protocol for any particular experiment now if i talk about what are the different uses of animal handling and how can you which all testing procedures you can do you can check out on any system cardiovascular neurological nephrological hepatological hematological uh, any system endocrinological you pick out a system reproductive system digestive you pick out a system you get any disease you work on it you establish a protocol so you can perform anti cancer studies you can perform genetic studies cancer alzheimer parkinson analgesic anti inflammatory anti convulsants that is uh, anti epileptics mating behaviors lactation peptic ulcer studies constipation diarrhea crohn's disease ibd hepatotoxicity you can perform bioassays uh, then there is new concept of radio ligand binding fluorescence binding whereby you can observe fluorescence you can perform tunnel assay for uh, checking out the apoptosis necrosis confocal microscopy there are different diagnostic techniques whereby any imaging techniques for particular animals so these are different uses hypersensitivity reactions bronchodilators vaccines you can also you uh, use to check the uh, efficacy safety and efficacy these are two major parameters for any particular drug to be approved by the US FDA and uh, after phase 3 so you pre clinical establishment of the safety and efficacy will help you to get a better clearance from the FDA as well so drace test uh, as i mentioned about cosmetics glaucoma test uh, glaucoma drugs testing capillary permeability so anticoagulants fibrinolytic agents hemostatic agents you can check they are particular you can screen these drugs now this is an image that is a one to one comparison so based on the different models or based on the different life span you can choose a particular animal suppose if you are choosing diabetes so 6 months 5 months it takes for the diabetes protocol to be established because streptozotocin alloxan induced diabetes is not that easier it takes time there is diet induced as well diabetes high glucose diet and all uh, high, high carbohydrates and all so that is very important that you know that which kind of study you are using so that you can choose an animal accordingly right 
so like c57 mice is most widely used for cancer studies so carcinogenicity testing is mostly done on c57 mice so you need to know certain physiological parameters like heart rate blood pressure and all that because that might help you ahead and these are the references that i have adopted for making this particular presentation and um, you can also look on these sites and these papers for more details upon animal experimentation and animal handling and these are my credentials for my social media account so you can contact me via my academia research gate linkedin uh, instagram or youtube channel i have my own youtube channel named payam bora you can just type this name and you can connect with me via there so i am a pharmacologist so i hope that i'll be able to uh, impart more knowledge and learn as well so it's a process of learning so if you all have any doubts you can uh, reach back to me i'll be sharing this particular links with your coordinator so, so that she can put it in the description section for you all and thank you so much for attending this webinar now i'm open to any questions if you all have questions you all can drop in the comment section i'll be more than happy to answer it thank you so much everybody